Hello again, folks. It's uh, September 4th or 5th, I believe. Uh, winter's coming. August 27th, we actually had some snow up on the high mountains over there. It's gone again now, but it, it was kind of a reminder that winter is coming and trapping season's on the way. And I have all these traps here that need to be waxed and dyed. And I was able to pick up two more of these wolf traps. They're the MB750s. They're about uh, 35 bucks or a little bit more a piece. So it adds up fast. Two of those traps with the swivels was about 75 bucks. Uh, I added two more swivels and some chain. But today I need to wax those, dye and wax those, and redo all these in here too. These are all also wolf traps. Get them ready to go. I thought I had another pound of logwood crystals, but I can't find it. What logwood is, is it's a tree bark. It looks a lot like a uh, powdered cinnamon or something when it's dry. It's kind of a reddish brown rust color. When it's wet, it it's kind of a, a purple, purple color stuff, and it'll dye your traps. It'll dye your skin, too, but, I mean, you got to soak it in there a little bit. But, uh, kind of strange stuff. Why it turns purple, I really don't know. But what waxing them does and dyeing them, it's kind of like a gun blue on a rifle. It, it keeps them from rusting. They come factory made from with a little bit of oil on it, and you got to get that oil off. So these have been run through the dishwasher twice without soap to get rid of the oil. And then they've been soaking in the creek for about two weeks. Uh, you need a little bit of surface rust to get the dye to really stick very well. And the wax, of course, it'll I, it'll kind of give it a protective finish as well. So let me get this fired up and get these things going. Okay, I got the water started to well, it's not boiling yet. Got it started, so it will boil. And while I'm uh, Waiting on that, I thought I'd go through my snowshoes and get them ready for winter. These are the more traditional style ones. If you've watched my videos at all, you'll know that I'm pretty traditional in my thinking. I don't like a lot of the modern stuff. Modern snowshoes that are aluminum and uh, plastic webbing, they're probably actually better than these. But it's just kind of... One of those things that just kind of irritates me. I don't know why everybody's got to change everything. But the traditional ones, they do take a little bit of maintenance. So once a year, you should give them a coat or two of the spar varnish to seal the, uh, the webbing again, seal the wood. These ones here are actually kind of a cross. They're a little more modern type than what I'm really used to. Most of mine are rawhide and wood. These are actually kind of a nylon webbing, and the, the varnish has come off, and it's starting to get fuzzy. But, I mean, nothing could be simpler. You just paint it on there, and cover all the, all the webbing, all the spots that's worn off. Well, it's one of those yearly chores that you have to do, and let... Uh, it doesn't take long, and it gets me kind of fired up again for trapping season. I don't mind it at all. So, anyway. Alright, I got my snowshoes coated with spar varnish on one coat. I've got some of my traps in here. It's starting to boil. Uh, what you do next is your trap wax. This I got from f &T. It says odorless trap wax directions for best results use enough wax in a clean metal container so the trap can be completely dipped in pure wax. Dip tracks in wax for approximately 15 seconds, remove and hang to dry. That's actually kind of misleading. You don't need to put pure wax. Wax is like oil it will float on top of the water so all you really need to do is in your trap dye bucket 
throw that in there and let it melt. A pound is plenty for that. It'll end up, it'll give a probably maybe a quarter inch thick, maybe not quite a quarter inch uh, film over the whole top of the water. And before I turn, pull them out of there, I'll turn the heat down on here so that you don't have any of the bubbles coming up and pull the wax or the traps, the hot traps up through that thin layer of wax. And enough of it collects onto the surface of the traps that uh, that's all you need. You don't want a real heavy coat of the stuff because it'll flake off. Uh, just, a, just a small, just a film of it is all you're really looking for. Uh, and uh, when I put in more of my traps, I'll turn the heat back up again so it's actually boiling. And then again when I pull them out, I'll turn the heat down so there's no air bubbles and just pull them up through the wax real slow and let them dry and you're done. Uh, that fire, forest fire over here has kicked up again today. Here the last few days, it really hasn't been very noticeable, but a little bit of smoke today. But okay, these have been boiling for about an hour or so now. And I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not, but see that line right there where the, the heat's coming up and causing that to bubble. But all that there is all wax. It's you just lift them up through that, and there's enough that'll collect the, their wax. You can't even hardly seal it, but you can feel it on there. Um, this one here, this one I waxed last year, just the heat of the sun, there's wax here that's coming off. So that lasted all winter, plus the summer too. They've been out here all summer. The rest of these look kind of dry, but uh, that's it, really. You just take them and you pull them up through the wax so I can hook the thing there we go pull it up through the wax and let them drip for a second the wax is hot, the trap is hot water's hot and I got two traps here let me change our snag it's hard to do this one handed anyway just pull them out of there Throw them onto this wire screen, and you're done. See the wax is collected to this hook. The hook is cold, so it's uh, it's going to collect more wax. Hot wax or hot traps or hot metal, most of it will run off. It'll it'll be enough, but it's kind of even hard to see it. Good morning guys. Uh, today is the day after I did these traps. Uh, they turned out really pretty well. They're pretty black. They got, like I said, a real, real thin layer of wax on them. Just, uh, just enough to keep them from rusting is all. And now that the wax is cooled, you can see there's just a layer of this stuff on here that uh, Get that out of there. Need two hands to do that. Anyway, it's about a quarter inch thick. Let's go ahead and break it here. About a quarter inch thick, and that's what you pull your traps up through, and that's all the more wax you need. Reading the instruction book, it kind of sounds like they want you to use pure pure wax and no water at all. Well, geez, you'd need 20 pounds of wax to do a trap. And, you got to put it underneath all the way and they have to be hot enough otherwise you end up with a real thick layer of wax and that's not what you want you just want just a film on there um, the other thing you want to do after you get them all done is to make sure where your trigger uh, the dog is make sure you scrape that wax off I end up I use a little uh, propane torch and I heat it up and make sure there's no wax right there because the wax lubricates them and it can make them really slick and 
uh, it'll go off too easily. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. It's kind of a kind of a quick video and not a maybe all that exciting, but it's a chore that needs to be done if you're trapping. Uh, I do all my traps, whether they're land or water. A lot of people just do the land traps, but uh, water traps they rust quack quicker, so. You don't really need to do them, but it's not a bad idea. It doesn't take very long. Anyway, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Good luck trapping this fall.